many of you guys are probably wondering, why are there two pool ponds inside of the fish gallery now? So now we just press that button on and there she goes. Go buddy. Right in there. Okay. Eesh. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Blake's Exotic Inner Ranch. Today, we are inside of the fish gallery and many of you guys are probably wondering, why are there two pool ponds inside of the fish gallery now? Well, unfortunately, we came across a problem already. I didn't want to say anything to you guys yet until the pools are here. We have three here now. But uh, the reason what happened is that we in here, way back then I had another pool pond in my old fish gallery and I had two of those rubber mats on the bottom. And I only put one this time, and I kept all the rocks over the top. My situation was, is that over here, I didn't get another rubber mat, and I put the cinder blocks in there, and I probably, not thinking, moved them a little bit in the water, and broke the bottom. So there was a little, little teeny slit, and a little teeny slit over there. And it's a pain in the butt to have water dripping all throughout the whole entire barn, and it's just a pain in the butt. You don't want to have that situation. So. All these fish are gonna get transferred right into here today, and it's gonna be easy. We're gonna get the pump, we're gonna grab the tube over there, put it over here, use the same exact water, transfer it all over into here, and then we're gonna set up another pool pond over here, and the big fish in the patio will be going inside here as well. But that won't be today, that'll be in another video, so keep those post notifications on you guys, because there's a lot of different things that have to happen here at the ranch. But um, I don't think you guys see that. We'll talk about that in a little bit with that water that's coming over here. But uh, let me go over there, grab this tube, set it in here, and uh, keep it going. We actually have a brand new aerator over there, very large one. We're gonna grab that one, bring it over here, so it's away from that side, and it has so many tubes that it's gonna go for air there and air over here for both pool ponds. But unfortunately, this one has to get thrown out because it has a hole, and I don't know where the hole is at, and yeah. So let's do this and start moving the water. So we got the tube out from the top of that dumpster. The pump is over there. We brought it into here. So now we just press that button on and there she goes. Just fill it up. So what we're gonna do is make sure the whole bottom is completely nice and perfect and stretched out so that there's no creases or any like little holes or anything like that. So it's nice and perfect and that's it, do the process. I actually have those crystals that I like to use to transfer the fish on the way right now so that these fish don't get stressed out, it just helps them for breathing, their lungs, and all those situations. And just in case they get a little stressed, try to get feeling sick, it just helps everything. I've always used this stuff, I'll show you just in a second. But let me just keep on moving this and getting it going. And they're not gonna be stressed at all, to be honest with you. They have no idea. The only stress happening is they're gonna get picked up and moved over here. But it's the same exact environment, same exact water, and the same exact friends. And we got two brand new rubber nets over here. I really like these nets because they're very soft. The catfish, the animals, all of them, they don't get their gills stuck, their fins don't get stuck. It's very smooth and rubbery. And I really, really like these nets. I definitely need to get bigger ones because these fish are gonna grow and they need to be a lot deeper. But um, right now, this will do for the fish that I have. Air Prima is becoming a true beast. The last time I put in here, maybe two months ago, he was a little bit smaller, but I mean, now he is, he's definitely putting some size off of him. So the water is just about maybe three, four inches left. The big high tip right here is spin is completely out of the water. So it is definitely time to start moving all these fish right now. All the good water over there. It's actually doing a water change at the same exact time pretty much because I'm adding extra hose water. We just threw in a ton of these because these are only 100 gallons at all. So we literally just bought seven of them. Threw them in there so that's 700 gallons worth because it's going to be over 1,000 gallons inside of here. These things are 1,700 gallons and I get the water all the way to the level of that black right there. So I estimated around to the top with all the water, plus with the garbage cans, say 1,500 gallons or so around there. Those are 55 gallons each. It fills to the top, all the way up to there. So I think around 1,500 gallons is about how much water is inside of here. But um, water's still pumping out a little bit more right there. Very, very fast. And uh, it's time to move them. So I'm gonna scoop quickly, fast, and just put them right into here. They're really not gonna realize where they're going. They're just jumping right into another spot. 
let's do it. All right, I got two nets, so why not just scoop them at the same time? Together, so let's do it. All right, guys, so let's just start scooping them and taking them right out. It's quicker, the faster, the less stress. That thing is getting, becoming massive. Like I said, same exact water temperature, no difference. Simple, easy, quick, just throw them right over. Both black skirt and surgeon. Fletcher, no. albino surgeon, and there again, even that's a rubber, so you really don't get stuck, it pops right out of the digital grade. Alright, so we're probably going to get some crazy action right now, air primer, air wanna, everyone's probably going to jump. There you go, we got air wanna right there, perfect, big old albino air wanna, probably uh, 14 inches or so. Think about that. Got another Obama marijuana. Same thing. They're all the same size. You guys all when they were just about uh, three inches or so. Do you guys remember all the way in the back video? We got an Obama ear dentin shark right here. No, we don't. Another Obama sturgeon. Another albino surgeon. You're a decent. Oh, yeah. You're a decent. You're right. The third albino arowana. Beautiful fish. Look how gorgeous this fish is, you guys. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, okay, okay. Relax. You're in. Two azul peacock bass. Right inside. Relax, bro. Relax, bro. Got caught at the same time. Another albino iridescent shark. We have four of those in here actually. Going right in. Albino iridescent is already swimming on the top of the water. One of my favorite fish. He might jump, hopefully he doesn't. Come on, buddy, go right in. One or the other. This guy is going to become a true river monster very, very soon. Look at this guy. Giant air timer. True river monster. They can actually breathe air and everything. There you go, buddy. There you go, buddy. There you go. Perfect. We got one more iridescent shark left. This is complete. The board. We have two Azul Peacock Dash and an albino Cloud Knight and a Dat Knight. I completely forgot about those. Love you, bro. There you go, girl. Come on. Come on. Right out. Maybe if you can't grab this blue light, let them. No. Got some claws on them. Gorgeous blue eyed like a Look at that. Look at that spins on that thing. There you go, buddy. Right in there. Okay. Ah. Gonzalez over there. You're okay. Just trying to find a hiding spot. All right, that's it. No more playing games over here, buddies. Guys are fast. They are fast. Got the final flick up. Fish, you that mouth running and stuff. There you go, buddy. All right, my bad. Bro, these things definitely see I wasn't a football player because these things are breaking ankles over here. There's no way you're getting out of this one. No way, buddy. Come on. Big old Azul Peacock bass. Look at the colors on that tail. One more female. I think it's not for sure. So let's grab her. Pull it out of here. Gorgeous. 
gorgeous, gorgeous. And like I said, they're right inside of here now, and it's just like how they were over here. So it's really not too much stress at all. Uh, right here we have the albino clown knife. Wow, he's getting big. Yeesh. That knife right here in this corner, so you can get in. Pretty gorgeous fish right there. I can't say, look at that. Boop. Right in. Albino clown is getting real big. Come here, buddy. How did you do that? <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna keep those bricks there anymore. You're getting too big. And he's scraping up his back, as you can see. So I don't really want that anymore. But so definitely put in the comments, you guys, what other fish hides do you, you use? I'm thinking about using a, a garbage can, plastic garbage can, cutting out both sides, and that could be a tunnel that you hide inside for uh, swaps to hide instead of these bricks. But, um, or maybe if I can make my own concrete thing, I've done that before, I might do something like that. But um, let's move the rubber, move these things over there. I actually have some mangroves that I'm gonna put inside of here to plant inside of here. Because as you guys see, we did a light over there. I'll explain all that in another video. Because I'm gonna add a stand going across both sides so that there's light so we can grow plants inside of these ponds because it makes the water just so much better and cleaner for these fish. So uh, let's do it. Dump this thing. Out of here, it's a nice rubber mat. They use these for a lot for restaurants. For flooring. But I've never had a problem with them. Down my ponds, so. Going in there, I'll go place that where it needs to go in just a sec. All right. And uh, I'm gonna go grab some plants, place them inside of here so they're ready to go. Move the filters, put the netting on. Got a little bit more to go, but yeah, those, those bricks are definitely not going there. You can see the back of that clown knife just getting so scraped up from him hiding inside of there. Because he's getting that big old hump on him. So that's not a, I don't want that to happen anymore. I want those scars on him. So I'll be back in a sec. We just added these mangroves right here inside of this one right here. Uh, yeah. So they've been growing on my property for a little bit, pulled them out. It should be okay with all the crap from the fish and the foods and everything inside of here. They should grow very, very well. Plus the lights over the top, they should do well. Let's pray for it. If not, I have a bunch of other water plants I'm gonna start growing inside of the stingray tank even more to get those going and doing good as well. But uh, let me grab this big boy, put that right there. Let's do hold this right there. Cool. And uh, let me just jump in there and set that in place. Water definitely deeper. And this is all rubber, so this won't hurt anything. Put that right there. Cool. All right, let's grab this. A lot of poop and stuff that just came out of there. That's all right. Actually, the water, the mangoes are still out of the water pretty well, so they might do okay. Let's see. Thought the water might be a little too deep for them, but I think they might be okay. Let's grab this next one, put this one in place as well, and then add the river rocks inside of here. Call it day. I can move them back. Just put the lights. To be honest, I mean, that's a little high spot right there. You really don't have to do that much more. Maybe I get another plastic and I can be just a tunnel spot for the clown knife to show. I want to be able to see the fish as well. So I have a five gallon bucket over here with another pump with the hose going to there to get more of this water into there and to bring it in there so we can level it, it out with all this water that they're used to and uh, move the filters and get that going. I am actually wasn't gonna put this rock inside of there, but because this is a limestone rock, it does really well making the water better. So I'm actually gonna place it, Dylan gave me the idea, the idea. Place this bad boy right inside of the pot, right there and the one to the left. So then eventually, those mangroves were actually wrapped around limestone already. So putting that in there, maybe in the future, it'll be just a big ball of root of limestone, that's pretty dope. But uh, let's do that. Get that piece of driftwood in there. And uh, grab those other rocks as well. But no rock is gonna hit the bottom of this pool, so it's only gonna be rubber. So hopefully everything does good. We don't have no crack. Yeah. There. Piece of driftwood. This is, there's nothing sharp on it at all. 
just in case. I'll just keep it in the middle, right here for now. So they have a little barrier or something. Yo, these things are completely smooth, but they're still gonna go right in the front of the rubber. There we go. They're heavy. Last one. So this one. Right here. There we go. They have little sharp parts. They can rub up against whatever they want. And yeah, what I want to do is get one more of these rubber things, put it on that side, move everything over a little bit, and just have a whole island of different stuff for the fish to hide around. But uh, hopefully now, but well now we're going to move the water, blah, blah, blah. Everyone's doing good at that right now. We put all those crystals in there to make the water nice and relaxed and good for them. But uh, yeah, if you guys didn't know, we actually got a couple smaller peacock bass over there and some uh, shears over there as well, raising up, they're going to be added into this pond once they get buried. That's gonna be the grow out tank. Oh, I didn't even tell you guys. Yeah, we brought the 300 gallon tank from the barn. Did we tell them? I don't know, did I tell you guys? Well, if you did, not idea. Um, well, I'll tell you again. We got it, it's right there. Painted it and all this stuff right inside of the building. Got a lot of stuff in here. As you guys can see, all the fish are moved over there. All of the water is just about over. We have another pump that's inside the old pond, filling up, well, sucking the last little bits of water that I could grab to go over here. I'm not gonna take it all, because you guys see there is some nasty stuff in there, and I'm not gonna just throw it over, there's no point. And then right now, I'm just getting some filter floss ready to go on these tubs right here. And with these, just like that, I'm gonna place this inside of here. And they have 90 degree uh, angles I have to grab, and they're just gonna go Right there and there, and it catches all of the nasty stuff. Oh, we have some right here. There we go. One there, and then put another one there. And this one doesn't go there because this is for something else. Is it for that? Yeah. Sure. Hundred percent. I don't think so. So yeah, we have that going. I'm gonna add another floss to go over this way so it catches all the debris. And I was cleaning this every other week. But obviously because of the amount of fish in here and things of that sort, I'm actually going to start cleaning this every three days. Get them in big rolls, you see right down there, all that gloss, and clean this out every three days so the water's always crystal clear and nice and healthy for the fish. I also have carbon that I lay inside of here as well and fill, uh, put another floss over the top so the carbon helps the water even more. But um, let's cut up a little bit more for these other two pieces and then let's turn this bad boy on in just a few seconds and Hopefully all the plumbing and piping and everything we did didn't get too messed up. That hurt a couple cracks, but hopefully everything's good. We let it run, keep an eye on it. And uh, yeah, we got it done. And I say me and Dylan got it done. What do you think, like an hour or two? Like two hours, not too bad. All right, so we're done in just a sec. So I'm gonna turn it on, and it's gonna take up a lot of water. This is 55, 55 gallons, so we'll just let it play for a second. And uh, yeah, there we go. We got two go. Just gonna suck up in there, go through all that, and go into there. But uh, not too bad, we got this whole process done. The peacock, look at that peacock, he's right there. completely a dark color right now, hiding between the bricks and stuff, so it can go into a normal, natural color instead of this white bottom. That's why I like to put that black in there so they have a different, uh, they can change up the colors and everything. But uh, not too bad, looking pretty good. This video, thumbs up. Well, I guess it's running. And everything is looking pretty good over there. Things looking not too bad. So I put this tube on right here so that the water doesn't um, go all in here. That right there. There we go. And there we go. And we're doing good. We're gonna dry everything up all around this whole entire thing to make sure there is no leaks. I really pray there's no leaks because we just literally transferred everything because of that situation. I think it was because of the rocks. Hope it was because of the rocks. Or it could have been just a bad pool. Who knows? We got another one. I had some people saying you should put um what you wanna call it? 
like a rubber on the bottom or stuff of that sort. But I know people that have the pool ponds like this and they're perfectly fine. I think she shows a bad pool. But um, yeah, everything's looking good. The fish are happy. I just saw the air of pine month come up for a nice breath of air. Good stuff. Clown knife is over there in the middle, hanging out. I'm not putting the hiding spots in there for him because I do not want him to get beat up anymore because his back is getting beat up and I don't want any situations with that. But uh, I'm really liking this. I really hope these freaking makers grow. If not, I'll just get replaceable things and uh, put new ones in there. But uh, we did it, you guys. We got it done. You guys can check it out over here. What we did over here a little bit. These plants were added in here probably like, I don't know, last week or so, and they were completely half the size, and they are growing up a storm in here. We're doing very, very well. We have those black containers to cut the bottom. We put a egg a crate on the bottom, put floaties on the sides. Got that idea for predatory fins. He was floating some uh, cages up to hold temporary fish, and doing good, doing good. So what happened was the other black diamond stingray that I had, I got rid of it because that was a male and I didn't want to have two males in the tank. So that's the reason why I got rid of that one. We actually have, if you guys remember, we went to Stingray Biology and he has another one with a scar face on it, a brown one. And it's going to be coming very, very soon. I'm going to tell him that this tank is ready to go. and He's going to send that over shortly, but just stay tuned. Keep those post notifications on you guys. Follow me on Blake Exotic Fish Ranch on Instagram because I literally already posted a video and a picture of this whole thing already and the video won't come up until a couple days so you know follow me there check it out so i hope you guys enjoyed to the video give this video a thumbs up and i will see every single one of y'all later peace out everybody